got to forget about whatever's going on. The theme is for us to get your point so we, we can praise God in the middle of our troubles. Amen. In the middle of it. Psalms 152 says, praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Psalms 22, 3. God inhabits the praises of his people. Second Timothy 2, 13 says, even if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He will inhabit the praises. He's going to do it. I, if I'm praising, he's going to come. If somebody is not praising, he's still going to come because I'm praising. He is faithful to his word. Amen. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to be able to lift your hands up. I want you to be able to magnify him. Now, Psalms 37 and 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire of your heart. So let's delight ourselves in the Lord, for he is faithful to give you what you want. If you know how to praise him. Amen. Jesus, Lord. And we ask you, Father, that you would be here with us, that you would show up, Lord, and let your spirit just cover us, God. Let it rain down on us, Lord. Let us feel your presence as we give you praise this night, Lord. So I thank God, I thank you, Lord, that you have sent these people here to praise God with me so that we can give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord. 
I pray that you'll uh, let the words that these pastors and ministers and bishops began to preach, Lord, that it settles on good ground. And that today we can just enjoy you, Lord, and forget about ourselves, Lord. I say all this in the name of Jesus. If you agree, say amen. Amen. All right. I say prayer, prayer, fix it for you. Pastors, bishops, ministers, all of them here to give you a word. Amen. A word of encouragement. The theme for today is praise him anyway. To praise him anyway usually implies a connotation that something bad or not good is occurring or has happened. For example, the the word anyway, when it's put together in the way that we have it, it means an adverb in in spite of or regardless of. For example, Timothy wasn't feeling well, yet he played football anyway. Shirley wasn't invited to the party, yet she went anyway. To use the term anyway means that there's some type of unhappy circumstance occurring. And actually, we see a perfect example of this in the Bible with David in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Many of us know the story. The prophet Nathan came to him and told him because of a sin he did that his child was going to be taken from him. And when the people, when David had heard that his child was going to die and had already died, this is what he did. It says in 2 Samuel chapter 12, 20, it says, Then David arose from the earth, washed himself and anointed himself, changed his clothes, and this is what many people lived. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he ate. What am I saying in my last two minutes? Sometimes God allows things in your life to happen that you do not like to happen. Sometimes there are situations that you don't want to happen, but God allows it to happen. And what are you going to do when those things happen? Do you turn away from God? No, one of the best things to do is to wash yourself, come into the house of the Lord and worship anyway. Praise the Lord anyway, even when it feels bad. Regardless of praising the Lord simply because he's worth it, there's a blessing attached to it. See, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus says to the people, when two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. And in the Old Testament, as the apostle had said in Psalms, it says that where the presence of the Lord is, there is fullness of joy. What are you saying? Make it, put it together, Pastor. When you are feeling in a way that is not good, when your circumstances are not going your way, when you come into the house of the Lord, where the presence of the Lord is, not only will you be encouraged, but there is fullness of joy there. You should praise him anyway. Worship him anyway. Do as David did when his son died. He came to the house of the Lord and he worshiped anyway. When you're feeling discouraged, praise him anyway. When you're feeling, you, you might have had a rough week this week. You may not feel that great right now. But praise him anyway and God will show up for you. Lift your hands and give him glory and the fullness of joy will come because you are in the midst where Jesus is right now.
you don't want in this life And glorify the love of Jesus to so my life hey! You are the source of my life and hope And my life and hope is you hey! And Daniel the third chapter There were three Hebrew girl boys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego Were thrown in the fiery furnace that was 3,000 degree Fahrenheit By the king because they refused to bow down his image and to worship his God. But they were committed and faithful to God even in facing death. The boy said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But, but, if not be it known unto you, O king, we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden images which you have set up. After that, the king got so mad, you know what he did? He intensified the flame times seven. He didn't know that he was setting these boys up for a blessing. Because see, seven is a divine number. It illustrates an idea of completion throughout the Bible. You know, there are seven I am statements of Jesus. But oh, what happened next? Verse 35, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they had no hurt, and the form of the fourth one is the Son of God. Now the word miss means in the middle of, the middle point, the interior of the central part or point. That fourth person was Jesus, walking in the middle of it, walking in the midst of it. It was Jesus of it. They went and they said, we're going to put a praise on it. But with all life, we're going to praise you. Well, I'm telling you, everything burned up the thing that was bound. So my question is, what is bound up in you? What are some of the things that are bound up as giving you the biggest problem in your life? Is it finances, physical pain, family strife, division, anxiety, depression? Well, this is what the prophet Isaiah 43, 2 said. When thou walkest. Passing by the river, I will be with you. It shall not overflow you. And when you walk ha, through the fire, ha, when you walk ha, through the fire, in the midst of it, in the middle of it, when you walk ha, through the fire, he said, I will be with you in all of it. So in the middle of it, Jesus is with you. You got to praise in the middle of it. You got to dance. In the middle of it, you got to pray. In the middle of it, you got to come to church. In the middle of it, you've got to give God praise. In the fire, when it's hot, 3,000 degrees, it don't matter. In the middle of it, in the middle of it, in the middle of it. Sit up in the middle of it. Seventh number of Psalms, verse five, six, 
and seven. The word of the Lord says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Turn to somebody and tell him I'm waiting on my blessing. The word of the Lord lets us know that all those who live godly shall suffer persecution. Now, in the middle of our persecution, we got to make sure that we don't let the devil steal our praise. We know that what the scripture says that Jesus said that a thief cometh to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, why should we praise God? Simply because the word of the Lord commands us to. The word of the Lord encourages us to praise the Lord. Now, why should we praise the Lord? Simply because we know what God's word says. Then shall the earth yield her increase. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for an increase. Come on, shout it with me, say increase. And then why shall we praise the Lord? Simply because God shall bless us. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on my blessing. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I'm grateful that God promised us that joy would come in the morning. So we praise him anyhow. There's, amen, a difference in worshiping God and praising God. We worship God because of who he is, and we praise him for what he has done. How many of you all know he has done great things for you? Come on, shout out with me and say, the Lord has done great things for you. Glory be to God. God bless you today. And may the Lord forever keep all of you in his care. Shout out with me and say, God is good. One more time, God is good. Now let's praise God. be a warrior come on now now i was built to be a praise warrior see when things don't go my way i'm gonna praise through it when things go left i'm gonna praise through it because it is through our praise god will open doors of opportunities hallelujah somebody come on now church your neighbor say are you are you good 
is it are you getting high up in here because the holy spirit is stirring up in this place he wants to see if he got if you got a heart of worship he wants to see if you got a heart of praise everybody up here already got the same message but the breath that you got in your lungs it is to please and honor the lord because god said through our breath we will praise the lord i don't know about you but i want to use my breath for the kingdom of god i want to use my breath to shout the glory of god so no you may look at me crazy but i'm crazy for the kingdom of god I'm crazy for the kingdom of God because you, we all come here as a body of Christ, but we all have our own story. And in our own story, there is a testimony. And in our testimony, there is a miracle. The reason why you sat here today, because you praised through it. The reason why you showed up today is because you praised anyhow. The devil tried to close the door, but you praised anyhow. The devil tried to stop you from coming, but you praised anyhow. You praised anyhow. Through the highs and the lows of life, you still praise. Through the circumstance, you still praise. When people tell you you can't get the house, praise through it because God will open up doors. People say you're not going to get that car, praise through it because why? Through your praise, there is an elevation. You can't see elevation without praise. You got to praise God. And then God will elevate you. Because in the Bible, God says, for the rest of my life, I will praise him. So when you know and understand the true meaning of praise, when you understand the fundamental of what praise is, you got to tell your neighbor, look, scoot over. Because the miracle is mine. You got to scoot over. Get out of my way. Because this season is my season. I'm going to get my house. I'm going to get my car. My kids are coming back. My community is coming back because I praised anyhow. Hallelujah, Jesus. How y'all feeling today? Anybody going through? Yeah. Sister, you going through? I'll praise him anyway. Well, 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 just praise him anyway. Yeah. Anybody else going through? Yeah. How many people got some debt? Yeah. If you got debt, you going through. Yeah. Amen. Anybody got a house? Yeah. You got mortgage. Yeah. You got a mortgage on there. That's called a death grip. It's called morgue yeah. and then gidge, which is a death grip. Some of us. We, we just got to go through, so we called them and asked for a second mortgage. We need a total death grip on us. So what? We can praise them anyway. Got to praise them anyway. Listen, we getting older, brothers. We getting older. You young man. Just a young man. I'm talking about 60 something. Okay, you ain't 60 something yet. You ain't going through. You start going through. Tears running down my face Cause my knee won't bend the other way I gotta praise them anyway When I get up in the morning I get up in the morning I, 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 I can't even I can't move I'm like <laughs> Ah Jesus ah, And it take a while to warm that back up Amen To get that blood to circulation I gotta praise them anyway. So I tell you folks, when you're going through, don't wear it. Bear it. Don't wear it. Bear it. And praise them anyway.
said, recover all. Tell your neighbor whatever the enemy took from you. You said, go back and recover it all. Come on, let's drop the track. Let's rock out real quick. Come on. Intercessors, make some noise. Prayer warriors, give God a shout. Intercessors on the wall. Somebody scream. We have some more tracks. Satan come to steal, kill, destroy, and wear you out. But the word of the Lord is this. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. Let's make some noise. Here we go. And recover. And recover. Come on, give me a little bit more track. And recover. Oh, sometimes you don't feel like it, but you got to press your way. Press. Come on. Say, and recover it all. Come on. And recover. Come on, that's all it is. Recover all. Come on. And recover. Oh, come on, Chanel. Drop the bird. We trap so much against that strength. Against that strength. But against principalities. Up your belt.
In January 2020, Chinese officials attempted to contain a mysterious virus later to be known as COVID-19. And in 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic and the world shut down. And since you're hearing my voice tonight, it's a far gone conclusion that you have been through the fire. And that some of you have even been through the rain. Come on, somebody talk back to me. Some of you, you even been unemployed. You've been displaced. You've been in recession and you've suffered repossession. You suffered loss. You suffered a health crisis. And some have even suffered death of a loved one. However, there's one thing that's unchangeable. One thing that's unwavering. One thing that's irrevocable. Unadulterated. One thing that's irreversible, immutable. And one thing that is conclusive. And that conclusive thing is that his mercy lasts forever tell somebody that his mercy endures forever tell somebody to praise him anyway because his mercy endures forever Lamentations 3 and 22 says it this way. It's because of the Lord's mercy that you didn't get wrecked up. Because of his mercy, you didn't get destroyed. Because of his mercy, you didn't get run over. Because of his mercy, you didn't get left for dead. And because his compassions are unfailing, they are new every morning because great is his faithfulness. Let me finish this out. And the perspective is simply this. When it seemed like you didn't couldn't go a little bit further, you need to remember his mercy endures forever. When it seemed like you've been forgotten, remember his mercy. Or oh, y'all should have it by now. When it seemed like life has got you beat down, say it. His mercy. When it seemed like your situation has got a stranglehold on you, his mercy. When it seemed like you're in it all by yourself, Come on, I need y'all to preach with me. When it seemed like you feel like you're quitting and want to throw in the towel, all give thanks to the Lord for he is good because endures forever. Somebody shout. This is what I did. This is what I did. I searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. What else? Hallelujah. So I'm gonna say it one more time. Listen. I searched the world, y'all. I went all over, but it could. I went to the mountain top. I've been to the valley. I made a whole lot of money. But it wasn't enough. Because there's nothing. There ain't one thing. There's nothing. What I, what I want to do is I, I want to include you guys in on this because I'm feeling just too good. So I'm going to just have to say like, uh, 
we search the world But it couldn't heal us Say it again What happened? Now can can I get everybody to say that I searched? I searched the world, but it didn't feel me. Now I want you to tell them why. Because there's there's nothing better than you. Come to nothing. If you serve a God that turns things around, do yourself a favor. Give God praise right there. Oh, that's cute for me. Come on, give God praise right there. The God that shifts, the God that changes, the God that rearranges. Give your God praise right through there. Come on. The book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 6, the first verse, it reads like this. It says, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. And his train filled the temple. In this life, there's no question that things, circumstances, and people have a tendency of meeting us at the most inconvenient times. It's in these times that it becomes easy to take your eyes off what truly matters the most. It's easy in times like these to feel stressed, overwhelmed, and worried, and to focus more on the problem than you do the God of the problem. So in Isaiah, t- in Isaiah 6, when Isaiah tells us in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. He's not negating the fact that death was right in front of him. He's just making a decision to choose Jesus instead of death. Which tells me in the midst of whatever situation that may be in front of you, you've got to make a decision to praise him anyway. You, you've got to make a decision that even though I may be looking death in the face, I'll lift my hands in the middle of it. I'll, I'll praise him in the middle of it. I'll shout in the middle of it. Matter of fact, my grandmother said it this way. I don't have to wait for the battle to be over. I can shout right now. I can praise right now. I can holler right now. So it's in these moments moments when we must praise God. Praise is something simple, y'all. I learned it's simply speaking well of God. It's simply praising him. Praise is my outward expression of how my heart says thank you. Praise is my expression. And many times when we get in certain situations like these and services like these, we have a tendency to judge the person sitting next to us because their praise may be a bit more expressive than yours. But the truth is, you don't know what it took for them just to wake up this morning. You don't know what it took for them to get here. You don't know what it took for them to lift their hands. So even tonight, in the middle of pain, hurt, and defeat, do I have five people that'll praise them anyway? Do I have five people that'll shout anyway? Do I have five people that'll give God praise anyway? Last thing. Last thing, and I'll let you go. The last part of the scripture says, I saw also the Lord and his train filled the temple. What you've got to understand about times like these, Apostle, is that back in those times, uh, whenever kings would go into battle with one another, the winner would cut off the train of the other robe and attach it to his robe. Which means in those times, however long of a train you had signified how great of a king you were. So when my Bible tells me I saw also the Lord and his train filled the temple, that tells me that I serve an undefeated God. I serve a God that's never lost a battle. I serve a God that's never lost a case. So I'll praise him anyway. In the middle of it.
chapter and the 21st verse says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And so tonight I'd like to speak on this topic, Locked Up, Late, Loud, and Loosed. Our praise to you drop theme tonight is praise him anyway. And that word anyway has a lot of different meanings. Any word, girl, I got to go. Meaning to end a conversation or to change the subject. Uh, whether you like it or not, I'm going to go anyway. Meaning in any case, anyhow, nonetheless, regardless. And tonight, I can see that we have come here to praise him anyway. So I want to take a minute just to look at the story of Paul and Silas locked up in jail. Because even though they were in those circumstances, they decided to praise him anyway. You might ask, how was they locked up in jail? They made the mistake of messing with somebody's money. There was some men who had hired a girl who had a spirit of divination using witchcraft to foretell the future. And Paul got to the point where he said, I ain't standing that no more. Devil, come out of her. And so this man couldn't make no more money off of her. They took Paul and Silas to the magistrate and they locked them up in jail. The Bible says they laid stripes on them. The Bible says that the jailer made their feet tight in stocks. They was locked up. It says it was midnight, so it was late. You know how our trials come when it's late at night. And then it said they sang praises to God. They got loud in the prison. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and the doors were open, and everybody's bounds was loosed. So the question is, what did they do in the midnight hour? Did they cry? Did they pout? No, they praised him anyhow. Maybe they sang hallelujah anyhow. Maybe they sang praise is what I do. Maybe they sang God's going to get the glory. But I'm going to tell you something. When it's late, when you're locked up, you better get loud and give God some praise. Praise him anyhow. Because when you praise, not only are your bounds loose, but everybody's bounds is loose. Oh, you might be locked up. It might be late. But get loud for Jesus. Praise him anyway. Praise God in the midst of the storm. Fill your heart with his praise. Turn your eyes and see his power and not his problems. You might be locked up. It might be late. But you need to get loose and get loud and praise him anyway. Oh, in the middle of it, give him praise. When there's tears in your eyes, give him praise. Locked up, loose, late, and hallelujah. a great God. Amen. Can you shout out with me? Say God is good. One more time. God is good. Amen. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord says in Romans chapter 8, very passage, very familiar scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Turn to somebody and tell them God is working it out. 
the Lord, he is working it out. No matter what we go through in life, uh, God always worked things out for our good. The Apostle Paul also made mention in another passage of scripture. He says, for we glory through tribulations also. For tribulation work at patience and patience experience and experience hope. Now that word experience in the Greek means character. So God is formulating character through some of the oppositions and adversity that we go through in life. So no matter what we go through in life, one thing that what we must understand that the word of the Lord says, for we know. Now who is we? Those that are in Christ. Come on somebody, amen. And when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You are a new creature. All things pass away and behold, all things become new. And so we know that for all things work together for the good to them that love God. How many of you all love God tonight? How many of you really love God tonight? Come on, give God some praise and bless the name of the Lord that we love the Lord. And because of his love and because of God, we love in him that he works all things out for our good. He's working it out. Come on, turn to somebody, tell him again. He's working it out. Amen. When my bills are due, he's working it out. When my family is not listening, he's working it out. When I am sick and afflicted, he is working it out. Come on, somebody. When the doctor had diagnosed me of something that had discouraged me, he is working it out. For all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Come on and shout again with me and say, God is working it out. Lord, I'll praise you anyway. In the middle of the day. Yeah. Lord, I'll praise you anyway. In the middle of the What you gonna do? Hey, you gotta get on your feet, yeah. If you want the Lord to move, tell me, brother. Just be bless the Lord. Come on now, bless the Lord. Why I'm why I'm sick? Cause it just happens. I'm telling y'all, it's a blessing to get old. Cause there's some people don't get old. They go before they get old. Amen. It's a blessing to wake up, and feel the pain. Amen. Know you still alive. I'm still alive because I feel it. 
Amen. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. He danced in such a way that he came out of his king's garment. He wasn't looking like the king anymore. He wasn't, he wasn't one of those pastors that just, you know, well, praise the Lord, saints, and they don't do nothing until it's time for them to come up. He danced out of his kingly robes and it made his wife upset. Amen. The wife that was given to him from Saul. But I'm telling you, you don't hear much about that wife. Amen. All of a sudden, she just wasn't there anymore. He didn't write up a, a, a divorce papers. It's just she was gone. He told a woman, you know, when I praise the Lord, I praise the Lord. And David was blessed. And my mama told me, David, if you just learn to praise the Lord, God will bless you. And I told the people here, if you just learn to praise the Lord, it doesn't matter the song don't move you. All right? It doesn't matter. We went to TBN, they were singing some country songs. And we were like, okay. But I told the people, don't worry about the music. What I want you to do is listen to the words. And then when you hear the words, then you can praise the Lord. We began to praise God in such a way to where they gave us $26,000 just for praising God. And we were like, this is what we do. You ain't got to pay us, but we ain't going to not accept it. We just said, thank you, Jesus, again. When I looked at the check, my wife, they gave it to us during the, during the and they, I looked at the check, I opened it up, and it looked like 2,600, and I just gave it to my wife, said, thank the Lord, God's good. And then later on, I looked again, it was 26,000. And I told the people, I said, if you praise God, people say, when praises go up, blessing come down. Well, see, I told them, I want you to experience the blessings that come down. And so we began to praise God and they began to bless us. I said, if you praise God, God will bless you. All right, do you, you hear me? So that's why I say, come on, get up, get your hands up, do your dance, run, do something so that God can recognize. My wife said, God don't, don't recognize non-movement. I mean, some of y'all, we, 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 we ain't dark, we ain't light enough to be, you know, not moving in the dark. This is a dark world, y'all. You got to move or God won't recognize you. Amen. The brother said he'll work it out to the good. Is that what he said? Work it out to the good. That means even when you make bad decisions. Amen. I made some bad decisions. God worked it out. I was going with the wrong woman. God worked it out. Get the right woman. Amen. And I went with her. You know how you go with somebody. You going to go with me? She, I said, you want to go together? She said, I want to go with you together. So we went to make a deed together. Amen. Amen. I like to see relationships. So when I look at some of you, I can tell where your relationship is with God. If you're doing, bless the Lord, come on now, bless the Lord, come on, you, you got to feel it, you know, and you like, I don't feel nothing. I'm like, your relationship ain't there. Amen. I want to see you holding hands with the Lord. I want to see you walking with the Lord. I want to see you talking with the Lord. I want to see you enjoying the Lord. Amen. That's where you got to have a relationship with him. Amen. And, and when we, I can only speak as a man, when I have a relationship with my wife or my, before she was my wife, when she was my girlfriend, I had a relationship. I smiled when she came around. Amen. I was even mad when she didn't. You didn't call me and tell me you ain't coming to church. The, the, not to church, but to school. You ain't telling me you need what you want. You telling me. She said, listen, son. I got a mother still. 
She tell me what to do right now. I had a relationship. And you can tell people that have relationships with one another. Because they sitting with each other. They holding, sneaking, holding hands. Amen. Amen. Got a relationship. I love my girl. She loved me back. Amen. When I tell my girl I love her, she say, I love you right back. Amen. Thank you for listening to this short excerpt. If you would like to view the full service, please go to our YouTube channel, Grace Cove One, find the full list of videos, and search for the video titled Full Service and Sermon. We also welcome you to join us at Grace Covenant at 285 Clay Avenue. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, God is over all.